I'm Adidas. Adidas raped and stole my designs. Fuck me, Kanye. Boom! All oh, y'all just got lit up. Today's video is brought to you by Backblaze. More on them in just a bit. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Brainblaze. Oh, as always, I'm your revered leader, Simon Wimps here. One of my writers writes me a script. Thank you, Danny. Uh, celebrity endorsements that backfired. And today's video sponsor is Established Titles. Do you want to become a lord? <laughs> Uh, it's not. It never has been. Never been sponsored by them, despite what we're on the internet. Are you fucking telling me? Fuck off. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Um, I feel like Hulk Hogan would probably make an appearance in here, doesn't he? Didn't he go through a phase of like endorsing like macaroni and shit? I guess it didn't backfire. It was just a bit weird. Let's go. Oh, celebrity endorsement is the backfires. <laughs> if Kanye West doesn't come up, then uh. Danny wrote this script before the whole Kanye became an anti-Semite and not even Adidas can drop me. And then boom, Kanye, they dropped you like a fucking rock. Maybe they could get The Rock instead, he'd be. That'd be cool. Maybe they could do some like rock shoes. I don't know anything about this stuff. I, I didn't, if someone asked, he does Yeezy shoes. I didn't know they were with Adidas and I don't know what they look like. If someone like took a pair of shoes and what are those other super famous ones? Um, are they called Air Force Ones? And they've got something to do with basketball. I believe they're made by Nike. And they look like basketball shoes. I couldn't... If people said, like, here's some basketball shoes, choose the Air Force Ones, I could not do that. I could try. But I probably... Unless they say Air Force One on them, I couldn't succeed. Also, why is that... Why is it called the, pla the name of the president's plane? That's weird. Anyway, let's crack on. Fascinating tangent, Simon. Let's carry on. It's an important morning at the headquarters of Happy Hippo Space Hoppers in New York. The marketing team have been negotiating with the agents of a slew of A-list celebrities who are interested in endorsing the next generation of inflatable bouncy hippo hopping in return for a big, fat, slobbery check. They're gonna make that bug! <laughs> and now they're ready to present the final shortlist to the CEO. Unfortunately, the jubilant mood is somewhat punctured when the names are proudly announced. Lance Armstrong, R. Kelly, Oscar Pistorius. A Lance Armstrong, I feel like Lance Armstrong, while he cheated, he didn't, his like crimes are not on the same fucking level as R. Kelly. And Oscar Pistorius, he went to prison for murder, right? Didn't he? Didn't, or something like that? Wasn't he allegedly? I don't know if it's alleged or not. I feel like he did get get busted for this. But didn't he, like, murder his girlfriend or something shit like that? I'm really not sure, so I'm definitely saying allegedly maybe. I don't know. Allegedly. But it feels like it was something like that. Whereas Armstrong, he was just, like, injecting, like, children's blood into... No, it wasn't children. He was, like, doing the blood doping thing. R. Kelly! is a sexual predator who is now in prison for like ever. <laughs> it's a different level of uh, problematic. You're under arrest. On the plus side, they all come pretty cheap. <laughs> Still might be need a quick rethink. Kanye West has very recently, bingo, illustrated how badly celebrity endorsements can backfire and how costly the fallout can be. We've got a very special special it's like a it's not quite like it's not an hour long but it's a longer one and it's all, it, it's coming i i hope it'll be released on uh, new year's eve so 31st of december this month and it highlights some of the uh the worst business decisions of 2022 some of them we've covered but it feels like they've all happened rather recently so <laughs> like Kanye west elon musk um god there was another one about something it doesn't matter. Wait till the end of the year. Get excited. It's uh, it's going to be fun. There's always an element in risk in of the risk in this kind of thing. Is the high profile and generously paid celebrity face likely to get caught out showing a preference for a rival product? Are they hurtling headlong into a major scandal that's going to wreck the reputation of your business? The uh, what's his face? Jared from Subway has to be on here, right? Because it's like, he went from fat to thin, just eating Subway. What a perfect example for the brands. Except it turns out he was a bit of a pedo. <laughs> I'm not a pedo. And if I was, you'd be safe with tubby little ginger. You what? Which doesn't look good. Although no one's like... I, I have to say, like, even something like that, which goes f***ing train wreck wrong, and the guy ends up in f***ing prison, it's still like... I don't think Subway knew this. <laughs> Subway's not endorsing pedophilia. They're just like, well, it turns out that the guy we chose uh, is a is a sicko. So no one's like, fuck you, Subway. 
It's like, if they, if Subway were like, yeah, but he did get really thin, <laughs> then everyone would be like, fuck you, Subway. But they're not doing that because they didn't know. You can't blame them. They probably did plenty of due diligence and did like one of those background checks and shit. He just obviously hadn't been caught for being a sicko yet. Are they suddenly going to start randomly behaving like a massive bell end? We'll return to Kanye in just a moment, but he's certainly not the only case of a lucrative endorsement resulting in tears, headaches, embarrassment, and sharply plummeting graphs. All surface, no feeling. An all too common hazard in marketing campaigns is when the big expensive name attached to your product accidentally makes it clear they don't really dig your groove. Oprah Winfrey appeared to be quite taken by Microsoft's new Surface hybrid tablet computer, adding it to her 2012 list of favorite things and regularly singing the praises of the device on social media. If she's getting paid for this, you've got to be super careful with this. Like, I don't know what the rules are, but I do know that if a company has paid me to promote something, I'm always, even if I'm like, I don't even like, the, the products that I really like is, um, one of my favorite, like, use it every day. One of my sponsors is Vessi Shoes. And they make these incredible shoes. And even when I say something, just like in a video like this, I feel like I have to say, they sponsor me. I'm not getting paid for this, but they do overall give me money. Even though I'm generally like, this is a fantastic product. Like, I would say that if they didn't pay me to do it. Like another company I talk about all the time, Revolut, the banking app. They've never paid me. I don't take any money from them. They're not a sponsor, but they're fantastic. Um, Backblaze is another one. They do pay me, but that is a service that I used and love. So it's very complicated, but I'm always just like, when I post that on social media or in a video, I'm always like, they do sponsor me, but I'm not getting paid to say this. Just in case, why not cover your ass? Life is better when you cover your ass. Oprah apparently felt that Microsoft's first tablet feels like a Mercedes Benz to me, people. Now that's a wowzer. A, Twitter, a tweet posted in November revealed that she was snapping them up like cheap donuts in the almost out of date aisle. Oprah said, gotta say, love that surface. Have bought 12 already for Christmas gifts. Did you buy them, Oprah? Oh no, she didn't. Did you buy them? Because I feel like, like I've never bought Vessies because then I can't actually get them shipped here because they're not available here, but uh, they give them to me for free which is awesome. I've got like five pairs and they're all, I keep two like nice and clean and I don't use them because <laughs> I use them on the camera. But no one cares. Let's just move on. Let's talk about Oprah. That's what you're here for. You're not here for my little sponsorship deals. You're here to hear about what Oprah's done. It must be nice to be on Oprah's Christmas list considering that these fetch $499 a pop for the basic version, but not everyone may have been impressed by the gesture. The original Surface was heavily criticized for its performance and limitations and the poor sales led to Microsoft taking a hit to the tune of $900. <laughs> and $90 million. God damn, I just burped in the middle of a word. I mean, basically, in the middle of a number. Great job. It's not clear how much Oprah was paid to bang on about it so relentlessly. Maybe she genuinely loved it and just wanted to share her new independent discovery. I doubt it, though, because you'd think that if Oprah was so in love with the service, she'd be using them to post that tweet. Oh, I says posted from iPad or whatever, doesn't it? Oh, no. Instead, anyone using a dashboard application such as TweetDeck could immediately see that Oprah's tweet had in fact been posted on an iPad produced by Microsoft's biggest fruity rival. It's often argued in Oprah's defense that there wasn't yet an official Twitter app release for Windows 8, the operating system on the Surface, so she had no choice but to whip out her iPad. But I'm not buying that, nor am I buying 12 Surfaces for Christmas gifts. Surface is still around though, right? They still make it. It must have got okay at some point, or Microsoft just keep pouring billions of dollars into it until people love it. You will love it! Do it. She could have just opened Twitter on a web browser on the surface. Yeah, she could have, but she's not an animal. Like, <laughs> Why would you... Like, things I don't use on my... Like, if there's an app... Well, I suppose there's not an app. That's the point. But you've got to be an insane person to be like, yeah, no, I just don't like... If 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 I use, was using Twitter in my browser on my iPad, it'd be like, what the f is going on? <laughs> No. Instead, she appeared to be using a rival device to tweet about how much she allegedly loved the service and ended up generating comical publicity for Apple, who were clearly providing the product that she preferred. Now that's a wowzer, people. Ah, but a bob bob. This kind of thing is a persistent problem for poor old Samsung. They forked out tons of money to entice celebrities into exclusivity endorsing their phones, but the same celebrities are often caught out by the press using their swishy iPhones in public. One of the biggest examples of this kicked off during the 2014 Academy Awards when the host, Ellen DeGeneres, took a break from telling everyone to be kind to each other. Right, Ellen? <laughs> yeah, did it turn out that Ellen's, uh, you know... <laughs> Not so nice. And posed what appeared to be an impromptu star-studded selfie featuring the likes of Brad Pitt, Jennifer Lawrence, Julia Roberts, and Kevin Spacey, whose market value has also taken a bit of a hit recently. 
<laughs> oh, Kevin. I, I'm so, like, I've talked about this before, but it's so sad with Kevin because he was one of my favorite actors. He's a brilliant actor. Why do you have to be so, so weird? Why do you have to be such a weirdo? Now we don't get to see any movies with you anymore, which sucks. I told you my deepest, darkest secrets, and you trusted me, even though you knew you shouldn't. I know what you want. The fuck? The selfie temporarily broke Twitter after it was posted live on the show, and it went on to break the retweet record at the time, generating just under 3 million retweets, although it's since been pushed down to fifth place. The current biggest belongs to some Japanese billionaire who was giving away free money. You can't compete with that. <laughs> no, you can't. Alan's super selfie was taken with a Samsung Galaxy Note 3. You can't help but notice this, as Alan was dramatically waving it around for ages, almost as if she was doing it on purpose. Oh, really? How do people get away with this? Like, you have to be so dis... Like, uh, uh, it just always seems like YouTube... Are and in the dashboard, they're like, does this post contain sponsors? You're always having to bang on about this for whatever reason. Like, how do you just... Like, I don't know. It feels like you have to... Shouldn't you have to disclose this? Somehow? I quite right too. Although Samsung denied paying anything directly to Ellen, they had pumped over $25 million into the Oscar ceremonies over the previous five years, to the point where critics were complaining that the whole thing was beginning to devolve into one giant commercial for the South Korean company. Wait, so what's, uh, what, if Ellen's not getting paid and she's waving it around and they just happen to be handing them out free at the thing? I mean, if you got it for free, do you have to, like... That's, you didn't get paid, you just got it for free, they just gave it to you. Does that? I don't think that. Does that count? I don't know. I don't, <laughs> maybe it does. I, I don't really get stuff for free unless I'm getting paid to promote it. Like, companies will send me stuff, like, for free, and I'll be like, okay, thanks. What do you want me to do? I'm not gonna, like, talk about it on the, the video for free. I mean... That's not how this works. <laughs> so, okay. The problem for Samsung is that when Ellen tweeted backstage throughout the rest of the show, all the tweets were posted for one of those pesky iPhones. It was almost as if Ellen had been instructed to wave about a Samsung phone for a bit for the big celebrity selfie, but had gone back to using her personal iPhone when she figured nobody was looking. And now the massive wave of publicity generated by the record-breaking tweet was partly serving to highlight how Ellen only resorts to using a Samsung when her hand is forced. In fact, the whole impromptu selfie moment had been a rehearsed thing to some degree, and official Samsung observers had expressed concern over the fact that Ellen was using her own iPhone in rehearsals. How about you f off, Samsung? Let her use whatever you want. If you want to pay her to use one of your phones, do that. And then, if you've got a problem with her using an iPhone, then you can have a problem with that. But if you're not paying her, what are you talking about? That'd be like if someone sent me a Samsung. If, if Samsung sent me a phone and then were disappointed I didn't use the phone, I'd be like, f*** off, Samsung, you're not paying me to use the phone. I'm going to use my iPhone like a normal person because I'm not insane. A few difficult conversations followed, after which Ellen was kindly gifted a Samsung Galaxy Note 3, but she appeared to ditch this new gift when she was quietly tweeting backstage, much to the annoyance of the company that was plowing millions of dollars into this back-slapping and occasionally face-slapping nonsense. Ah, advantage Apple. Again. Yeah, look, Samsung, if you made a phone that was as good as Apple, then all the celebrities would be using it, wouldn't they? The thing is, you make a phone that is slightly cheaper, and celebrities have lots of money, so they're just going to use the, the more expensive and better version. In fact, it's not... It, that just like most people, right? Because iPhones are just better. Don't get on to me, Android people. I tried one of your Samsung phones for six months, and I hated it. And then, because I was pissed off that Apple kept screwing me. This was back in the day, because the battery sucked. And I'm like, it, the batteries always suck after a while. So I tried, I bought the like fancy-ass Samsung phone, and I was like, no. No, no, and then I bought a new iPhone, and I was happy again. So let me interrupt today's video to tell you about one of my favorite sponsors, keeping me safe, keeping all, like, I make a lot of videos, and these videos need to be backed up if, like, my hard drive crashes, and it all goes away, I don't want to have to make this all again. It's, it would be a disaster, and Backblaze, Stop that from happening. Bagblaze costs just $7 a month, which is an unbelievably good deal, considering that they provide unlimited backup for PC or Mac. Movies, music, photos, videos, projects, all the data, all the data you have. And believe me, for me, it's a lot of data, and it's still just $7 a month. It doesn't matter how much you use, you can just keep it all going. And it works uh, automatically. Like, any time that I, I like, add some, like, one, once we're done with this, I'll add this to my computer, I'll offload the files, and it'll just start syncing automatically with Backblaze. I just leave my computer running all the time, and then at night, it's just like, 
and it sends all my files away to Blackblaze with like nice fast internet, which is just brilliant. You don't even have to think about it, and then you're like nice and safe. No like backup disks anywhere or anything like that. They've restored 55 plus billion files for their customers, and you can also download the files. That's a nice. That's a nice thing. If you got fast internet, you can just download your backups, or if you got slow internet, they'll send you out a disk, and you can send the disk back to get a refund, or you can keep it. And there's some fee for you buying the disk off them essentially, which is just great and easy. Look, you get a 15 day no credit card required trial at backblaze.com slash blaze. That gives you plenty of time to try it out, check things out. And look, I love it. I'll think you'll love it. It's a free trial without a credit card. What have you got to lose? It's backblaze.com slash blaze. And then if you like it, keep it. It's seven bucks a month for a peace of mind. It's super great. Backblaze, thank you very much. And now back to today's video. The Samsung Note 3 was destined to make more headlines for all the wrong reasons in the very same year when one of the greatest basketball players of all time, LeBron James, posted a clearly distressed tweet to his 12 million followers. My phone just erased everything it had in it and rebooted. One of the sickest feelings I've ever had in my life. Just, if you were using like an iPhone or whatever, it'd just be all with an iCloud. What's going on? Poor old LeBron, even NBA superstars can fall victim to technology fails. But the thing is that we all knew exactly what type of crummy phone had done this to LeBron. It was his Samsung Galaxy Note 3. And the reason we knew this, it was the only phone that LeBron currently used, as he had been a massive Samsung endorser since 2010 and had been paid over a hundred million dollars to promote their wonderful devices, which apparently erase everything, reboot, and then leave you with the sickest feeling you've ever had in your life. Oh my god. Like, I sometimes think that I get paid quite a bit of money for my sponsorships and stuff, and then you hear <laughs> this guy got made a hundred million dollars to just use a fucking Samsung. <laughs> Look, I, I take back everything I said. <laughs> Someone pays me a hundred million dollars. I will never use a phone again. <laughs> god damn. I'll go back to a f***ing pager. Here's a bit of good news, though. Within 10 minutes, LeBron had deleted this tweet and replaced it with something more uplifting. Close call, phew. Got all my info back. Gamer, lol gamer what does that mean this clearly proves that it only takes 10 minutes to sort out even the most severe problems with the samsung galaxy note 3 either that or the very same galaxy note 3 suddenly went mental with angry calls from samsung executives who were keen to know why they were paying lebron 100 million dollars to diss their phones Mwah. If you only had one job, the year is 2006, and you're off to participate in a press conference at a film festival in Austin, Texas. It's time to choose which luxury watch you're going to stick on your wrist that day, but do be careful. The wrong decision here could land you with a $25 million lawsuit. Oh my god. When Oscar-winning actress Charlize Theron chose to wear a Christian Dior watch for that very same film festival, she must have wished that she had the power to turn back the hands of time. The issue was that just one year earlier, she'd signed a $3 million contract contract with Swiss watchmaker Raymond Waal, and this 14-month contract had clearly stipulated that Charlize must only wear Raymond Waal watches while during public appearances, particularly when the paparazzi were taking pictures. When Raymond Waal discovered it, while, 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 I don't know, I don't care, discovered that Charlize was two-timing the brand with Christian Dior and getting rival watches plastered all over the next day's papers, they sued the actress for $25 million for breach of contract. Holy shit, that's a lot more than the contract was even worth. Charlize initially pled that this was a simple oversight on her part. This seems like she just put on the wrong watch. Chill out, guys. She's probably got like a million endorsement deals going on at the same time. It's going to be hard to keep that straight. $25 million is a very expensive, honest mistake. Jesus. I kind of feel bad. Like, she should... <laughs> and I also can see myself being in a position like this where I'm like, oh my god, I've made a very expensive f up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> $25 million? Oh my god. I am never going to financially recover from this. I hope this works out okay for her. I'm sh she must be mega rich. I'm sure it's fine. But even $25 million, that's a lot of money to even very, very rich people. I mean, like, celebrity rich, not like Elon Musk rich. And it did appear that she just got into a bit of a muddle with their endorsements, as she'd also signed a separate contract to endorse Christian Dior perfume during the same period. But I'm not convinced that this is so hard to get right. If somebody was paying me $3 million to exclusively wear Raymond Barr watches at public events, I'd at least take the time to write a little post-it note and leave it on the fridge as a handy reminder. Just something along the lines of watches, Raymond Wahl. Whiffs, Christian Dior. Space hoppers, happy hippo. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's fair. Like, if someone was paying me that amount of money, I'd take my other watches and I'd put them away in a box and I'd leave a little note on top that said, just don't wear these at all, just in case, until X, Y date when the contract ends. And then you can go back to wearing these other watches, right? I'd do that. I feel like I would do that. Yeah, even if I had loads of endorsement deals going on, I feel like that's just one thing I'd be like, or my lawyer would be like, how about you just put a little postage note on there? Post-it note. Come 
Come on. It's not that hard. Failing that at those prices, I'll be tempted to just chop off the other hand as a handy visual cue. It turns out that the contract had included wider stipulations about wearing only Raymond Wilde jewelry in general, stipulations which Head in the Clouds Charlize had repeatedly broken over the course of this brief window of time. Both parties agreed to an undisclosed pre-trial settlement at the 11th hour in 2008, but only time will tell if Charlize learned from her mistakes. I imagine the amount was something like the amount on the original contract, right? She probably just had to give back the money she paid and their legal fees and such. $25 million just seemed a bit heavy-handed, doesn't it? Here comes Kanye. Biggest rock star on the planet with a taste for absurdly expensive trainers has been generating headlines for all the wrong reasons in 2022. Although he now wishes to be known as Ye, most people still refer to him as Kanye West. And although the influential hip hop artist and producer used to enjoy a long string of lucrative collaborations with some of the biggest companies in the world, he recently managed to isolate himself to such an extent that he'd face an uphill struggle in an application to become an in store demonstrator for pimple cream in his local branch of Cheapskate Cosmetics. He could get an endorsement. But it would have to be like, I mean, the people who are going to endorse it is going to be like, why are you getting endorsed? Ah, oh, yeah. It's just going to be like far right political parties, uh, a guns, a store that sells Nazi memorabilia. That's the people who are going to be endorsing Kanye West from now on. It's crazy. <laughs> He's hardly a stranger to controversy over the years, but his, most of his sponsors, most notably long-term collaborator Adidas, tended to stick by him through every controversial step. For example, when Kanye declared in 2018 that 400 years of slavery was an African-American choice. Oh my god, I don't even remember that. Dudes. Adidas CEO Casper Rosted didn't seem too bothered. He noted, Kanye is a very important part of our strategy and has been a fantastic creator. I'm not going to comment on every comment he is making. Yeah, but then you did. Kanye himself appeared to believe that he was invincible, as a company like Adidas would never shoot themselves in the insole by daring to drop their biggest cash spinner over a controversial comment or 12. But October 2022 was a busy month for old Kanye, during which he ramped up the controversy to the point where it became more difficult to casually just shrug it off. He wore a White Lives Matter t-shirt during a fashion show in Paris and followed this up by declaring that the whole Black Lives Matter movement is a scam and that George Floyd had died from self-inflicted drug abuse rather than murder at the hands of a police officer. <laughs> what are you, fucking stupid? I don't even know what to say. Around a week later, he was posting a string of anti-Semitic comments on Instagram, during which he reached the startling conclusion that rapper, Pu rapper Puff Daddy was being controlled by Jewish people. Okay. <laughs> And isn't it P. Diddy? After being booted off the platform, he turned to Twitter, where he revealed to his 30 million followers that he was feeling sleepy right now, but he planned to go death gone three on the Jewish people that following morning. <laughs> Need my coffee before I go all death gone on the Jews. <laughs> This was presumably a con confused reference to the military term DEFCON, describing the intensity of a national threat, so we should perhaps be grateful that he at least wasn't committing to DEFCON 1, which may have been proper nasty. We'll never know what he had planned, though, as Kanye was swiftly banned from every social media platform. I feel like this is one of those tweets that you'd just be like, bro, I know, I know, I know I shouldn't drink and take Ambien, but I did. I did, and I regret it. I'm sorry. I'm giving this lasagna a massage while preparing to announce I'm joining ISIS. Because while you'd get cancelled into oblivion, you could work your way back from that, couldn't you? Maybe, maybe not. Death Con 3 on the Jews is fairly, in that's fairly intense shit. And a few days later, Vice reported on some of the unaired material from Kanye's recent interview with Tucker Nelson on Fox, in which the hip-hop star let rip with a barrage of statements which were racist, anti-Semitic, conspiratorial, and downright alarming. Kanye's sponsors could no longer look the other way. He was dropped like a hot potato pancake, but by pretty much every brand with financial ties to the artists, including Balenciaga, Foot Locker, TJ Maxx, JP Morgan Chase, and even his talent agency. And yes, Adidas eventually severed ties with Kanye too, but they didn't half drag their high heels about it, only deciding to ditch the artist a couple of weeks after everyone else had shown in the door. Yeah, because it was worth so much money. Yo, that is messed up, yo. I'm a genius, all right? I'm the most talented musician in the world. You'd think that the dubious origins of a company like Adidas, which was founded by members of the Nazi party, may have inspired them to act a little quicker in condemning the anti-Semitic rants. Even their own employees were venting frustration over the lack of action, including their director of trade marketing, who declared, until Adidas takes a stand, I will not stand with Adidas. When your own, like, C-level execs are rebelling, you gotta, you gotta do something, Adidas. 
you got to do something anyway. Like when one of your main people is like spouting off like anti-Semitic shit this time, especially when you have like a history of with the Nazis shit, guys. All day I dream about anti-Semitism. <laughs> Ah. When the company did eventually release the inevitable divorce statement a couple of weeks later, all the belated hand wringing about Adidas refusing to tolerate anti Semitism and hate speech rang just a little hollow because of the amount of time it took for them to get there. Of course, it's not hard to see why Adidas was so hesitant. After they first hooked up with Kanye in 2013 to produce his Yeezy branded trainers and clothing collections, it was heralded as the most significant partnership between an athletic brand and a non athlete. Those Yeezy products generated $2 billion worth of sales in 2021 alone and the company's decision to cease production and sever the partnership will reportedly result in a painful hit in the region of 246 million dollars perhaps that's why kanye still felt he was untouchable these words would quickly come back to haunt him i can say anti-semitic and adidas cannot drop me it's also possible that the final decision from Adidas was fueled by more than just Kanye's hate speech. He'd been acting like a pain in the ass for a while. It earlier publicly accused the company of stealing his designs for use on non yeezy products. It was also alleged that he was constantly badgering the company for more revenue, regularly harassed and insulted employees, insisting on showing everyone pornography on his phone during business meetings, bloody hell, and was demanding that Adidas give the job of CEO to his mate. Upon hearing of his dismissal from the collaboration, Kanye gave a thoughtful and considered response. Nari! And he said, fuck Adidas. I am Adidas. Adidas raped and stole my designs. Fuck me, Kanye. It, uh, how then? Okay. Boom! All oh, y'all just got lit up! Ultimately, the company hardly came out of the saga with flying stripes, perhaps only following the example of other collaborators when they realized the situation had become completely untenable. But Kanye will also feel the pinch on his own wallet. The billionaire has complained in the past that Forbes can't count and that his net worth is always dramatically undervalued on their rich list. If Forbes estimate Kanye was worth $1 billion, Kanye would rant that he's worth well over three. It shouldn't need to worry, though, about that for a while. This termination of all these lucrative business collaborations has seen his net worth plummet to $400 million. F***ing peasant. Kanye was last seen getting briskly escorted from the premises of Sketchers HQ in Los Angeles, where he turned up uninvited, presumably touting for a deal. Since writing this, he showed up on Alex Jones's show. <laughs> oh, my God. Sketches were having none of it. Perhaps somebody should have told Kanye that Sketches was founded and is still run today by a Jewish family. Oh, Kanye, no. No wonder they went death contrary on him. And that's where we end today's video. Thank you for watching. I see good things about Hitler also. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler.